Hey everyone, greetings from Painted. I am the guest retailer here on Artistic Painting Studio today. And we have fun, fun, fun projects that I've been working on. If you have followed me at all on Facebook, um, I have been recently, because I took a vacation, I created a Geode Yeti tumbler. And this is specifically a Yeti brand. You can do this with any of the tumblers that we're going to show you today. But this is really cool. I, I actually posted this on a travel group just to say, hey, look what I made for myself. And you know what? I sold eight of them. <laughs> I hadn't even been planning on putting them on. I just did it for myself and they were so popular, I had to keep making them. So I have become stunningly proficient in this. Of course, I will make messes today just to prove. Hey, Laura, nice to see you here. I will make messes today just to prove that I'm not proficient because that's what I do. I make the mistakes so you don't have to. So, Yeti, these tumblers come in all kinds of colors. Oops, clunk, sorry. Um, I usually just start with the plain stainless steel ones. Um, and so when the stainless steel ones come in, you know what, you know, the stainless like this and stainless on the outside. So the first thing you're going to do is sand your st stainless steel cup to give it a little tooth. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that. I'm sure you're all completely aware of how to sand. So I'm not going to demo the sanding. Um, the one thing I will tell you, when you do the sanding, wear a particle mask. Why? Because you don't want to inhale metal sawdust that's not good for you so definitely you know, and then once you're done you take a, a little denatured alcohol or a little rubbing alcohol i love this spray bottle that i got at walgreens spray down the cup wipe it down so there's no grease on it but it's also removed all of the dust the next thing you're going to do is you're going to paint it a basic color now everybody who's familiar with foils knows that your base color matters when you put a foil over it because you're going to have flaws in the foils that will show cracks so your color underneath has to be complementary to what you're going to put over it i have painted this in faux effects set coat metallic teal which in itself gorgeous metallic color and then i've also primed uh put um our oh excuse me Artsyville foil adhesive on it and I'm going to be working on several sorry you're going to see me leaning off because this is kind of got a lot of moving parts and everything had to be shoved to the side so that I have a workspace in front of me um, and if you are on my many chat list where you get notified about my lives um, I did send out a notification about this one but there seems to be some sort of interface issue going on with with how I send it out and how Facebook receives it. It has nothing to do with me. You'll probably get notified, I don't know, 10 o'clock tonight. I'm sure excited about that, getting that ding just as you're starting to doze off. I know it's Saturday night. I still go to bed early because I still have to work tomorrow. So back to this. I have sanded, scuffed the surface of this, wiped it down with alcohol, then primed it with set coat. Why did I choose faux effects set coat? Set coat is super high bonding and dries really hard. It's interior and exterior rated. So I know that if this cup goes outside and sits in the sun, the color will not shake, uh, fade or shift. And then I applied and allowed to dry a coat of our Artsyville foil adhesive. So the next thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna have to shift things around and angle the camera, and I just, dumped a whole gallon of foil adhesive because it just fell. Hang on, folks. I can clean up many messes, but I better clean up this gallon right now because I'm a genius and it's all over my floor. So I'm gonna let what's on this chair drip into the can and I'm gonna keep going because I'm a pro. Everything else I can work with later. I have time. So let me spritz my hands with a little alcohol because that will clean off the little bit of adhesive that I just got on my hands. Jennifer, I'm going to be ordering another gallon from you on Monday. Oh, I'm such a genius. Okay. Big mess is averted. I can clean it later. All right, camera down. 
here we go. So I have my tumbler and I'm going to use our gorgeous Abigail foil. I mean, how pretty does this look on the, if you think this is going to be? I think it's going to be spectacular. So next I'm going to take this little bit of foil and I'm cutting about the amount that needs to go around a cup. And yes, I did stick it on there. I'm going to put the foil behind me so that I don't spill anything else because I'm a genius that way. Yep. I'm always, you can always count on me to make a mess because like I said, just as soon as I start showing off how much I know, I spill something, drop something, make, it, make myself look like an idiot. So what I've done now is I've literally wrapped the cup. And I did foil, put foil adhesive on the bottom, but I can get that at the end. So the first thing I'm doing, and my hands are still sticky, there we go, that's better. I put the adhesive on and I rub. Hello, hi, I think your name is Carmelina. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone because I dipped the corner of my iPad into foil adhesive and I haven't yet had a moment to clean it up, so I'm reading on the phone. <sighs> Those of you who know me, hi Randy, nice, to, oh, I'm sorry, it was Randy there, but Eva there, nice to see you. So, you know, if somebody's gonna do something dumb and sloppy, it's gonna be me. And this is me every day in the studio. Don't think that this doesn't happen regularly. Not usually dumping a whole gallon, but that's my own fault. Okay, so I put the foil adhesive on, it's cured. I actually put the adhesive on this yesterday, so it had lots of time to dry. Not that I couldn't have used it about 15 minutes after I applied it, but it was easier just to do it yesterday and have it ready and waiting for today. And I like to rub the whole surface. And sometimes you get these sort of little cloudy bubbles, and that is actually a good thing because what it means is you push down here, pushed it to the surface, the foil is coming back, but it has released all the pattern down here. So if you get any of that happening, it's almost like a gift. It just shows how easily this foil releases. Okay, so I've rubbed the tar out of that. I'm really trying hard not to step in the puddle of foil adhesive on the floor here. Um, I'm gonna wing over here and show you the seat of my chair. Yeah, that's foil adhesive. I'm a genius. <laughs> so I'm ignoring that and I'm just gonna work on my cups. Uh, I'm using a scrub brush to do a final pass over here. Most of the time I can just get this to release with my fingers, but when I have uh, a couple of different levels that I'm working on, meaning a couple of different heights, because I've got one height here and one height here, I like to use a scrub brush. <laughs> Hi, Gigi. Nice to see you. Hi, Deborah. All right, so I'm going to pull this back, and we're going to have a really nice release. Oh, I kind of generously put adhesive on last night. Oh, <laughs> it didn't want to come off that thing. That tells you how good the adhesive is. But already, look how gorgeous that is. Now I'm going to take, I have some here, so I'm just going to take this and put it on the bottom. So I can foil the bottom. And I didn't do enough because I didn't scrub it hard enough. So, super scrub. And there we go. Look at that. It's beautiful. There's a little spot there. It just needs a little attention. And look, it released perfectly. And if I'm not crazy about how all of this released, you know, if I think there's too many cracks, I'm seeing too much of my base color, I just come back in with the foil. Because I, since I didn't set up a really hard seam, I can just sort of go back in with a little foil and fill in a few spots. You see? And it kind of just gives me a little extra color and background on there. 
and when I do anything with foil adhesive on this video, I'm just going to be dipping, dipping into my chair seat next to me. Sorry about the shaking, I'm scrubbing. So I love how this works. This is in itself. I don't have to do another darn thing, and this is a gorgeous cup. Gorgeous. But we do have other ways to treat this. So my one of my first go-tos is when I have stuff like this just to seal up the cracks with a little glitter. Um, and I don't know what color glitter I feel like using on this today. I think maybe a little silver, a little of our Artsyville silver. And I always try to have a plate or a piece of paper under me when I do this, because I make messes, obviously. I'm gonna take, yes, Carmelita, it's so fast and it's so easy uh, of that foil. What was my paint color, Gigi? It was Faux Effects um, Metallic Teal Set Coat. Okay, so you can see I'm just sort of sprinkling a little glitter on here, sort of dusting it. And what I'm doing now then is rubbing it a little bit. And what that does is it kind of seals up any of the loose spots that might have sticky foil adhesive. It just makes it all that much more glittery. And again, I can leave this this way and it would be perfectly fine. But that's not me. I can't leave well enough alone. I have to go back and play with it. So I have ways that I can do different things. So the first way I do stuff, sometimes all I do is just take a little glitter and put a couple bands on. Let me see where my brushes are. I have tons of brushes set aside for these things. And of course, none of them are within my reach. So when you see me going over here to dip, I'm dipping into my seat. <laughs> so the first thing, this has a given little band around here. Do I sell these completed tumblers? Yes, I do. I have them on my website for those who are not familiar. It is paintedstudio.com. Uh, look under gifts, all of the ones that I'm completing, as a matter of fact, in this video and tomorrow, because I'll have to finish them, um, will be for sale under the gifts section. Um, and I sell all the materials to make these. Um, you don't see what you're looking for on my website message me and I'll make sure I have it for you okay so I put a little adhesive down around the bottom and I think I'm just gonna put a little band right there too uh, got to dip into my spilled on gallon of adhesive chair um, if you're not steady I do this easy because I've been doing this for a lot of years um, this is my 30th year in the decorative painting industry, and I think Jennifer beats me out by two years. There's, so I'm kind of old hand in painting things without tape, but if you are somebody who is more comfortable, you can always put a little bit of low-tack tape on here. And, uh, I even clean, as you can see, I can clean my edge up with my fingers because I know that because I'm applying adhesive and I'm going to, I can wipe it back. If I spill a little right where I just wiped it back, it will look more like this than a heavy coat. Um, and I'll set this aside. We'll move the, on to the next one. You can already see that that right here dried and we'll move that to the side and I'll be able to play with that one like right away. Um, this is another one that I did and I love, this is the Gar Garrison Glitter. Um, what kind of tumbler? I, if I miss your questions because I'm, I'm trying to paint and I don't look up at my phone to see your questions, please know I will go back over all of these. I will answer them in the thread and when I post this video to the page, I will list all the materials and the colors that I've used. It might take me until later this evening, but it will be all on there. So I don't, I don't want anybody to feel like they've gotten left out of anything. 
Um, okay, so I'm gonna set this aside, that brush aside now. And this is another one. This is a 24 ounce tumbler. This one doesn't happen to be a Yeti. This one I think is like a Bubba or something. I got it. I can't read the bottom of the thing. It says Brafi. That's this brand. I picked this one up yesterday at Target for like $9. So I normally when I do these for custom, for clients, I use Yeti's because I think Yeti brand is the best brand. It keeps everything cold. But in general, most of the stainless steel tumblers are really good and I'm actually looking for a wholesaler um, so that I can take some of these on another way. Um, make it a little less expensive because if I can get my cup cost down, then I can get the cost and everything else down. Mm. Sorry, I had to have a little hint water, my favorite water. Okay, so like the one I just showed you, this one has was painted black as a base color, set coat black, and then this is the Garrison Glitter Foil. I like this one just because it's a little different. I tend to go kind of light colors and I wanted to really go bold on this. And look how well that released. I mean, the release on this was amazing. Um, so we're gonna do a little different thing on this one. So you, there's ways of adding lettering and patterns on here at different stages. And so the next one we're going to do, I think it was this one. I picked these up at Michael's. They were on clearance. They were like $3 and it's adhesive stencils. And the tack is low on them. So they're pretty friendly on here. Uh, I'm gonna pick one of these to go right on here. Um, I think it'd be kind of funny. I may give this to my husband. I hope he's not watching. <laughs> so I've got this adhesive sticker. I'm gonna put it over on this side. And I'm just putting it on lightly. And then on the opposite side, I'm gonna say, let's see. I don't know, for my husband it's either love always or you make me happy, but I think the love always on this with what I'm going to do or just even the love will read better. Um, I want something that reads fairly clearly. I think love always is what I'm gonna use. And of course, take these up carefully because you can rip them. And you don't want super big ones because this is also, you can see it's on an angle. So anything you're gonna lie on here is gonna wanna curve to that angle. Let me take a look, where's that? I need to figure out the center of mine's here and you can almost naturally just pick it up, look at it from the top and figure out about the center. So I'm about dead center there. If it was really important, I'd measure it. It's not, so I don't. So a lot of people, when they do these videos, I wanna cover something right now. You see, I do right up to the lip. Um, not everybody likes to do that, and not everybody works with products that are food safe. Now, as this sits right now, this is not food safe. When we epoxy coat it, the epoxy that I use is food safe, so it can go all the way up to where the mouth sits. But of course, these cups all come with lids to drink out of them anyway. But at this point, this is not food safe. Once we epoxy it and the epoxy is cured for 72 hours, it is 100% food safe. All right, so I've got the love always on here and I've got the hearts on this side. So I'm just pushing it down so that it doesn't bleed. And I'm gonna take a little more foil adhesive in my brush and I'm dipping back into my seat cushion over here that I spilled all over. And I'm going to apply through the stencil. Now these are not reusable stencils. Once I'm done with it, they're done. You throw them out. I have some adhesive stencils that you can use up to 10 times. This is not one of them. This is one that when I'm done, it's going right in the garbage. So I'm gonna take my love always, dip into my seat cushion again, and I'm just applying and I keep trying to glance up and see questions, but I don't always get them because your questions come by a little faster than I'm able to read, but I will not forget you. I will probably take a minute shortly and lift everything up and read the 
remarks and comments and questions and make sure I answer everything. All right, so I'm gonna gently, you don't wanna push this on too hard because if you push on something before you've sealed up your adhesive, you can, I mean, uh, your foil, you can rip your foil back off. Um, we're gonna see how good these are because if I rip my foil back up, at least you don't, haven't done it. I need a, to go grab something with it. I tip on it to slide under. All right. Oh, I got foil adhesive on the bottom of my shoes and they're sticking as I walk. All right, there we go. I'm gonna peel it up. Um, the other thing is don't, between your foils and the adhesive or anything, see, don't pull straight up. You put a lot of tension on the surface. Peel it back like that. So you get a you don't have this sharp pull and it'll give you a nice clean release on your stencils. Um, I know you're wondering why I'm taking the stencil off, but I don't want to leave this on here any longer than I have to. All right, come on. Hi, Doris, nice to see you. Michelle, Kelly, nice to see you. All right, so I've peeled this off because it's not going to matter. The only place I've put foil adhesive on here is where I put that stencil. So once that's dry and I'm ready to use it, it will be perfect. Now, the other way to do this, especially if you've got a super textury surface like this, because I have glitters of all different kinds and stuff on here. Um, if you wanted to put lettering, you put a skim coat of epoxy on there, which is what I did with this one. And this one, I, I primed um, light green metallic set coat. Then I used our faux effects, I mean, I'm sorry, um, the APS uh, weathered copper foil. And then I used some, I put foil adhesive around here on the bands and used the APS ice glitter. So this, again, I could leave this as it is. I've put epoxy on it, so it is completely sealed up. I'm food safe because it's cured long enough. I could drink right out of it and not have a problem, but it does come with a lid. But what if I wanted to put lettering on here and it was a rough texture? Well, that's how we get to the next thing. Or if I wanted to put a different pattern. If, it's, if you need to do that, you take super fine um, sandpaper. I think this is, what grade is this, 400 and you lightly scuff the entire surface. And it doesn't matter that you're doing this because when you put the next layer of epoxy over this, all of this scuffing disappears. The epoxy seals up all of this cloudiness. So I've, I've made it a little dull. Um, you're gonna take, like I did before, a little, little alcohol, spritz it down, take a piece of paper towel, wipe it off so that you don't have any of the dust from the sanding. And again, when you sand, I do. I just did a quick one. If I was doing all of these cups, you bet I'd have a mask on. You don't wanna breathe epoxy powder. Who wants to breathe that, look. So I've done that. And then we're gonna put maybe a little, I have another one of these adhesive stencil packages that I bought at Michael's the other day when it was all on closeout. And I don't know if they carry, the, I'm not a Hobby Lobby person. I know I'm blaspheming to all of you Hobby Lobby lovers, but I'm not. I'm a, more of a Michael's person. And if I keep doing this stuff, I'm gonna have to invest in a cameo or in a Cricut or something like that. And, put that in my studio to start cutting my own stencils because this is kind of crazy. I seem to be going through a lot of adhesive stencils lately. All right, this is a different brand. So I'm just peeling that off the plastic and I've got this little, almost a mandala pattern. Um, you bought a tumblers that are already colored. Um, as long as the coating on them is not silicone. You'll know if it's silicone if you're not sure. Um, 
because nothing sticks to silicone, you'll know it. It'll feel a little funky, rubbery, and um, you're not gonna love that. Oh yeah, I put that on completely crooked. Sorry, trying to play a stencil while I'm talking is probably not my best move. Now this, I can beat on pretty hard because it's already got the epoxy on it, so I can't hurt the tumbler. I can ruin the stencil, but I can't hurt the tumbler. So let me try getting this on straighter. This is what happens when I talk and paint at the same time. I lose focus on one thing or another. Okay. So I'm gonna push this down. And this one I am making an effort to burnish a little because we're actually going to use paint. And I have to pinch and manipulate it to fit the curve and the slope. Um, so I have tumblers like this that have a, I get back what I was saying, so because I didn't want to short anybody on that topic. I have tumblers like this that have a silicone coating. It means that nothing stains it, nothing gets fingerprints on it, gets dirty, you can take a scrub brush up and comes real easily and it comes in bright colors and you can feel the coating. It'll feel a little like a shower curtain. Um, if it has color on it already, like the Yeti tumblers, they often have, but it's an enamel coating, so you can just scuff that up and paint right over it. Um, it'll go just fine. But just make sure you scuff the syrup. And if you're not sure if it's silicone, put a bit of paint on it and let it dry for a day or two. Then take a piece of tape, and if the whole thing comes off when you put the tape on it, you know it was silicone because it wasn't designed to be painted on. I have some phone cases like that. I have a couple of these. I can't use them for anything like that. All right, so I've got that on. And what we're gonna use next, we're going to use, you won't be able to read this, I don't think, maybe you can. It is Faux Effects Metal Glow in Spruce Green, which I love. Do you have to sand it if it already has color on it? If it has any color that is other than what you applied with a brush, yes, you have to sand it. You have to have a scuffed surface so that, that whatever you're going to put it on next is going to grab because these surfaces are treated to shed stuff. So you wanna make sure that you can actually get at it. And I think I just put paint, yeah, I just put paint on my face. Oh Lord, save me from myself. Okay, so we've got the stencil on here. I've got some spruce green uh, metal glow. And then I have to offload a little because I've got too much on my brush. Again, these are the APS stencil brushes. I and I carry these. You can purchase them from me or you can purchase them from Jennifer, where, whoever you're closest to. So I've got my Stencil tacked down nicely, and I'm gonna take it, and I'm just gonna apply color. And I may have to come back and do this a second time because this Metal Glow is like, similar to um, Modern Masters Metallics in that it um, is sheer. It has, uh, because of the metallics in it, the base of it is translucent. And so you might need more than one coat to cover. So I'm gonna do my first coat and set it aside for a little while and we'll go back to it. All right, now the other cup that I've been working on, see we're, we're juggling between cups. This one, another gorgeous, gorgeous combination. This is uh, painted with black set coat then I applied foil adhesive, the Artsyville foil adhesive. This is our pink tie-dye foil. And I started the process of the geode. To get to this, you have to start like this. So what I did is I painted an organic shape with foil adhesive. 
and sprinkled the foil on, uh, the, the glitter on, and it stuck. And then I put another couple of boundary lines around that shape, and I did it on the other side too. And I sprinkled another glitter. And then I took a fine little brush and did a fine line. And I've got our silver glitter, so we're going to go and sprinkle the silver glitter along the edge. And do I worry about getting it into the other areas? No. Do I worry about getting it any place that I didn't want it to go? No, because I only put my foil adhesive on in a specific spot. So I let the foil adhesive set up. I sprinkle the glitter on. And I do it over a plate. I either do it over a plate and do it in a way that all the glitter's here or I try to empty some of it back into the jar before I pick up another color. Can't guarantee. Okay, so here we go. You can see the geode pattern on here starting to emerge. I like to brush it out, take down the extra glitter so you can see the pattern better. I and mean, look how cool that is already. But I'm not done because geodes have quite a few layers. If you look at this one that I did, I've got several circles of color and then we'll have details that get painted on there too. Oh, excuse me. But I've done some like this one that was all just glitter and glitter and more glitter. I didn't do any fine detailing. So now I'm going to take my brush and my foil adhesive from my chair God, I'm so graceful. And I'm going to come back up against this glitter line and just paint another band. This is more time consuming than it is complicated. It really isn't that, it, it's, not, it's not a challenging thing once you get the basics of it figured out. So I've got that band painted there. That'll cure. We should be able to put the next color on here, which is a killer color. I have lots of foils and I have lots of different glitters. Um, every day I go home, hell, my husband's covered in glitter most days now because I put things in the laundry that have glitter and then he decides he's like, oh, I'll wear that shirt again, not knowing it's got glitter on it. And then his face has glitter on it, my husband, if his, his personality is, wasn't so sparkling, his glitter certainly would be. Okay. So I've painted another band on here. So we're gonna let that set to the side and dry. And I'm gonna put my brush on my chair in the, in the foil adhesive that's sitting down there. Now, you remember this one, I put it on, I put, the adhesive on here. I don't even remember where I put it right now. I didn't, I can't see it, but I know I put it on there. So I have black glitter. I'm going to create my lettering in glitter. So I'm going to just start sprinkling until I see it grab somewhere. And that was a good guess because it grabbed just fine right there. Look how cute my little black glitter hearts and, and sparkles next to it. And then that means this side has, oh yeah, there we go, it's grabbing it all. Look how cute. Just knock it all out there. Oh, I like that. I like that it says love always. Look how cute that came out. And I, trust me, it's on here. I'm taking a brush because I knock everything off. I knock some of it loose. If I don't like it, I go back in and I rub it. I make sure it grabs. There we go, oh yeah. And do a little more. And again, if I don't think this is enough, if I don't like it, if it doesn't read dark enough to me, I'll go back over this with more foil adhesive and I'll just put some more on here. It'll be perfect. Matter of fact, 
Why don't I show you right now while I'm talking about it? So I want my hearts a little darker. I can see where everything is. I'm just going back in and painting. I do this all the time, double glittering, all that sort of thing, because I want to make sure my glitter is really making the impact I need. So if I'm going to do that, I'm going to make sure that um, if I need to, I can put more on. There we go. And I have another smaller brush so I can go back into details, little ones. So I got little, they're little starbursty shapes right down here. And if you're worried about this at all, then do not take off the stencil. Just leave the stencil sitting right back on your, your piece. Glitter it wipe knock it down and re put more foil adhesive me i'm i'm okay with redoing it myself i'm comfortable with my brush skills there we go let's go back over here and i gotta catch the light you're probably seeing it better than i am right now there we go it's not easy to see I got a little overhead head glare and I keep trying to drip, dip my brush into <laughs> the glitter instead of the foil adhesive because I'm a genius that way. Okay, as soon as we get all of these with the glitter on it, I'm going to show you where we go with the epoxy. Sorry, I'm, I get, I'm getting quiet when I'm looking at small things just because I guess it's like turning your stereo down. I want to see better so I don't talk. Love. All right. And I just need to see the A and see the other letters. So I'll do those first. It's very exciting watch me type lettering or paint lettering it's just a little hard I'm trying to catch things in the light and I can't always see the way I need to because I'm blind as a bat there we go now I can see them I know it's not very exciting to watch this, but. Okay, so I've got that set up, ready to go. Put that there. And let's see, what else did I do? Oh, that's right, we need to go back and forth a little bit. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna finish putting the paint on this. So that when I pull this off, nice opaque read on the pattern and truly um you'll see a lot of people that and and this is kind of a common thing is that if you have a texture based coat then you're going to coat it with um epoxy and then do your lettering over it it gives you a smoother surface or if you need to create a more detailed design or something like that, this is what allows you to do that. Now I'm gonna come in. I should be, eh, I'll go back and check to make sure I'm as opaque. Gosh, I keep trying to dip my brush in the glitter and I will eventually do that because it's right in front of me. So I'm gonna pull, doesn't matter if I do this when it's wet or dry, usually easier actually if it's a little wet because then you don't have any paint pulling up. 
and you can see again I'm pulling at about somewhere between a 30 and a 45 degree angle for my surface so that it does not create additional tension on the painted surface again kind of doesn't matter right now with the epoxy but it's a good habit to get into and just tearing these off stuck to my finger that's not going to help me get that other piece off okay so we got this cute pattern on there oh i like that so i'm going to set that to the side let that dry i'm working my way through it all folks i'm working my way through it all okay let's get that glitter out of the way let's put the lid on the paint before i do something dangerous i've already spilled epoxy i mean uh, adhesive let's not have me spill glitter into it and I'll have this mountain of glitter and glue in the middle of my floor. Okay, I'm going to step up for a second because I want to reach over for one more uh, glitter. Sorry, I got to grunt and reach and lean. So I don't use just plain glitters. I find stuff like this. Michaels has these Martha Stewart glitters that come in all kinds of killer patterns like stars and hearts and moons and butterflies so i use those and they also have sort of what looks like confetti glitter so i use that as well and it's so pretty and i use all of these on the cups i think they add more interest than just using constantly the same thing so now on the geode cup that you saw me pour i mean uh, paint I'm going to open this glitter. Oh, I didn't realize I hadn't opened this one. And it's got heart shapes and dots in here. It's got all this killer stuff and a little tinsel shape. Look how gorgeous that. God, I love that. So I've got that nice band that I painted on this. And again, I'm just sprinkling it on. And then I go back and I pat it down. it around I just want to make sure that all the glue coated areas or adhesive coated areas I, I know other people maybe there are other people who found a way that's simpler to do this but honestly this is not very complicated it's just time-consuming and I don't mind taking the extra time if I get the result I want from it This is so sharp with this orange and pink tie-dye. I really like all these orangey and pink glitters. Oh, I love this. Okay, so that gets set to the side. And again, I'll build up more rings around it because that was what's going to create the look I want. Um, and I'm just, now I'm, all I got to do is just put a little more black glitter on this one and we will move on to the epoxy phase. All right. I just want a little more black on here. There we go. See, now it's reading much better. Sometimes you just, it just takes two layers instead of one. And there we go. So I'm going to move this all to the side now because the next is the epoxy. All right. So it takes a, you know, epoxy is the final kind of layer. So it takes a little while to get there. You kind of got to get all the other stuff going. If you heard a, board, a box knocked over, there is a box that I knocked over. Why? Because I have about 16 different projects going on at the same time as always. So now I'm going to adjust the camera angle so you can see where I'm going with these cup rotators. And these are two different style cup rotators I wanted to share with you. Um, this one, 
the spinet, you get it from Home Depot. I mean, not Home Depot, from Michaels. It's smaller, it holds small cups pretty well. I'm not impressed with it for the big cups. Um, as a matter of fact, you can see I've got, what I have here is paper towels shoved in there because you can't adjust the size. This thing, when you pull it apart, looks like an egg beater and you can't adjust the size of the um, little prongs to make it hold different size cups. So uh, I discovered early on that the best way for me to do it was to shove paper towels around it. Works best. So I can do that and prop it and it goes on here. Um, the second one I bought off of Amazon for a little more money and I actually, it, it has some things that are better for me and it has some things that are worse. Hang on a second. A, it comes with different fo sized foam core, uh, pieces of sponge. So you can take, if you have a big cup, you have the big size. If you have a small cup, you have the small size. They both go right on here. And then you stick your cup on it. Um, and this is great because this holds these 30 ounce cups, these big ones like this, much better. This one from uh, Michaels doesn't grab it as well. I'm not as impressed with how it grabs. This one works just fine. Now, the one thing that this one does that this one doesn't do is it has adjustable speeds. I can get it faster or slower turning. Now, I'm not happy with the way that's sitting on there right now, so I'm gonna have to shove some things around in here to get it sitting right. And I want those paper towels fluffed up a little bit so they grab it better. Um, this actually, this angle is not a problem because what happens is if I put a thin coat on and it needs to drip off, the angle is precise. What I have right here that's underneath here is parchment paper um, so that it doesn't drip and bond to my table. And it's, parchment paper actually works as well as wax paper or silicone paper. It does not bleed through. And this really just does not want. Now that I played with it, I had it perfect for you guys. And now that I played with it, it's not perfect. Of course it's not. But you see, this is why I have all these paper towels shoved in here. Um, I have four, total four cup turners, and because I bought and used them all, obviously I'm not returning them, so I make them all work to suit my needs. Um, I'm gonna set this one to the side for now. I'll finish it tomorrow. But what, the next thing I do is I put, obviously you see if I've got them on the turners. The other thing that helps here, and I'm gonna pull this up so y'all can see this, I hope, um, I use a timer. These cost like $15 at Home Depot because I don't want to leave my studio and walk away and have these going for 12 hours. But I have found that having them spin for a minimum of eight hours gives you the most consistent, even finish. So what I do is I set my timer. Um, preferably for earlier than when I need to turn it on because it won't turn on it. You, you need it moving when you start putting the epoxy on because otherwise it'll dribble. And I have it set so that I know it will go off, turn on itself off in, in the amount of time I want. So let's go with the epoxy. All right. So I have plastic cups. I'm only doing two of these tonight. Uh, it's just the way it's working for the night. You are using, I'm using art resin epoxy. It dries crystal clear and is completely food safe when it dries. Um, it is a one-to-one -one mixture. So this is resin and hardener. This is the hardener. Um, I grab the resin. Ah, sorry, my arms are not long enough. I keep thinking that 
Santa gave me longer arms for Christmas, but I was obviously wrong. So it's one-to-one, -one. you wanna make it even. Um, if you're not good with eyeballing, If you're not good with pouring even pours, use a measuring cup because these portions have to be even. If you have too much resin and not enough hardener, um, it'll stay soft and sticky. If you have too much hardener and not enough resin, it will dry too fast and become brittle. Hang on a second, I need to grab my gloves and I need a foam brush, which I did leave set somewhere else. The one thing I forgot to bring up was the foam brush. Everything else sitting right there. All right. Now we're getting down to this. So I've poured one into another, put the cups on top of each other, and I'm stirring aggressively. Um, I've seen people say, oh, stir so slowly, don't get the bubbles. You have to have the bubbles. The bubbles are part of showing whether or not it's completely mixed. See, I got my gloves on. For those who know me, you should be proud. You see me with the gloves. I never remember the gloves. Um, and generally you should be wearing masks when you mix this too because all these little bubbles that are flying around are epoxy. You don't want to breathe that. Make sure to scrape the sides completely. Stir, 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 scrape, scrape, scrape the bottom, and then stir, stir, stir. And it's, once you think you've stirred it enough, stir it again longer. Oh, I love this stuff. So now it looks a little foamy. That's not a big deal. We're going to slide this one forward, slide that one so it's on the paper. We'll start with this one. Now, I'll cover the, the coat, deal with this with one more thing saying, this is the one that already has a layer of epoxy on it and then we painted this pattern. Okay, that's great because this is how we get these painted lines. If you look, you can see the white painted line and there's actually a gold painted line and a magenta one. We did it on this step. You'd put a coat of epoxy on, sanded lightly, painted the veining in with acrylic paints or faux cream colors or something along those lines. And then once it's dried, we do another coating on here. So the first one I'm doing, this is our first coat on this one. This is the second coat on this one. And let's see how dry that paint is. I wanna make sure before I start brushing stuff over it. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, so I'm gonna turn it on. This one happens to have a switch down here. You can see it's starting to roll. Can you see that? It's a little harder to see until the pattern reappears. There we go. And this is the only speed this rolls at. So what I do, is I take it, turn it off. I pour a little bit of epoxy on here with a foam brush. I'm smoothing it. Epoxy will want to level itself, so it's going to drip no matter what I do. And then I roll it to the next base. I take a little more epoxy, I brush it on. And I just make sure it's coating everything. And then I turn it back on again and look for the next blank space. Now it usually takes, yeah, got that stuck to me, a couple of passes. 
and I don't worry that it spills to the bottom. I just brush it the bottom too. Now, if this had kind of a, um, a plasticky bottom that I was not worried about whether or not it got covered because it in itself is a, as fine as it is. The ones that are all metal bottoms, I always, always, always um, do the bottoms. Okay, so I've got that on. Now I've got epoxy over the whole thing. And if I leave it like this, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have drip marks under here. So you turn the turner on and it runs. And then you take the torch because now it's not even. This will pop the bubbles, but it also liquefies the epoxy a little more so it spreads more evenly. All right, so I watch this now as it turns, see if I've got any funny spots that need to be adjusted a little bit. See right there, I can see I've got some spots that I just wanna smooth it because I don't want anything drying unevenly either. All right, and there was a little bit of unevenness right there. And you see that this makes the epoxy very liquid when you do this. So you'll probably have some dribble under here, but that's perfect because it will do it just to the right thickness. Um, epoxy on its own doesn't generally want to be poured on a surface thicker than an eighth of an inch. It wants to level itself at that point. And that's exactly what it'll do. See, I, I go back over here if I see some spots that are just not smoothing out properly. If I see something where a bump might come, I do that. Now, if I get a weird bump and it dries funny, generally it's not gonna be here, it's gonna be down here. And all I'm going to do after that is smooth it out with a Dremel or a sanding block, preferably a little a Dremel because that's a small hand tool that you can just use as, uh, to sand things as opposed to a big sander. Now this one has nothing on it, so this is gonna be the first coat I'm pouring. I'm just gonna give myself a spot, and you can see these will turn in different directions. Sometimes they make up their mind and you turn it off and it turns in another direction. I never can figure out. These things can have a mind of their own. So now I know I've got this on here, and I'm gonna take this, just pour and spread. Got that spread. As a general rule, my favorites are this. I prefer this, the spinner from Amazon. The spinner I got from Home Depot, I mean uh, from uh, Michaels, I paid $16 for this one, I paid $25. Um, I find this one is not as sturdy for the bigger cups, obviously. We talked about the fact that, you know, I'm watching it shift as I work on it. See, I'm pushing it way down. It can be a little grumpy. All right, I think I've got the entire surface covered. Now it's time to torch this. I'm popping any bubbles and I'm sealing up the coarseness of the glitter surface. And I'm creating a food safe surface. Now, I got enough glitter in here, I mean enough epoxy in here. I may just pour the rest on so it doesn't go to waste. how these come out. Yeah, 
you can see where I'm struggling with this one. And it's the same struggle I had. I usually put smaller cups on. These happen to be 24 ounce cups, so they're a little big. Um, these work better on the 20 ounce Yetis and on the 10, you know, the wine glasses, the, the smaller size. They don't have the weight pulling this down at the end. Um, if you do a lot of these, invest in foam brushes. I went out and bought a hundred of them the other day because I find that I'm going through them a lot doing these. It's not like you can clean the epoxy out of them. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna see how this goes. I've got my timer set. These will be turned off by midnight or so tonight and ready to go. All right, let me pull this up. Okay, uh, I'm curious about the little torch. Most of the ones I've seen are a bit, well, thank you for the, thank you, Becky. That Yeah, I love my tumblers. Um, the little torch is just, you can either get those, where did I put it? You can either get these at restaurant supplies for creme brulee, but this one I got at Home Depot. It was next to the big blow torches. It's just, a, they call it like a craft torch, you know? And then you fill it up in the bottom with a, a butane like you do with the light, with like an old uh, butane lighter. So I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you for sticking it out. This was kind of a long one. We've been on for about an hour, but it was to show you all the layers. So to surmise everything, um, summarize, sorry, not surmise. Uh, you take your cup, you sand it, wipe it down prime paint color, preferably something like Set Coat, which grabs and bonds Bondego from, uh, uh, who makes Bondego? Perfetto makes Bondego. And Aura from Benjamin Moore are all good. Do not use cheap paint doing this because you want a better paint for a better bond. Then foil adhesive, foil over it. Then you start creating your patterns in paint and glitter. If you have a highly textured glitter, you do a skim coat on it so then you can do your lettering or any extra patterns afterwards. Seal it up with epoxy, put your next layer on, seal it up with another layer of epoxy. Once this dries, it's 100% food safe. And my cup's wanting to try to fall off. Once it seals up, once it cures up in 72 hours, it is 100% food safe on the epoxied areas. Do not seal up a cup like this with anything other than food safe two-part epoxy and expect that cup to be food safe. You have to use food safe top coats to make these food safe. That's why we use art resin epoxy. There are also, I think, um, the stone coat epoxy that Jennifer has been using. Stone coat, stone decor, I can't remember. Stone coat epoxy, that one dry dries and that one's food safe as well. As a matter of fact, most, epo most two-part epoxies when they're dry are food safe. Not all though, make sure you know what you're getting into. So once again, thank you for being here. Um, I will put, once I post this, I will sit down, I will put down all the products in the post itself. I will answer everybody's questions. If I don't get to you right away, it's because I have a husband who's taking me out to dinner shortly and I don't wanna miss my dinner date. <laughs> Seriously, I will get it all on there tonight. You will have it by the time you wake up tomorrow morning if you haven't seen it um, before you go to bed. Meanwhile, I'm gonna ask everybody, share, share, share the videos. Help us all grow, help us bring uh, more people into our epoxy loving cruise. And meanwhile, you all have a great weekend. I'll talk to you soon, bye-bye.